So far, we've talked about stereotypes, which are behavioral expectations based on super fair, superficial characteristics. We've talked about biases that we have, um, halo effects, primary attribution error, confirmation bias that skew how we perceive others. The last thing we'll talk about that influences our ability to accurately perceive other people is something called display rules. And display rules make it difficult uh, to see what, which emotion people are authentically experiencing. Display rules govern who can express which emotions, how and when. And uh, especially in the United States or in the United States, there's uh, really powerful display rules about like wait staff uh, and customer service. Like when you go into a restaurant in the United States, they, they like pretend they're your friend, right? They're like, oh, hello, where would you like to see? Or where would you like to sit tonight? We're so glad to see you. And they have this big smile on their face and they're really friendly. Um, and if a waiter or waitress gets uh, upset at a customer there there's not allowed to like be mean to them or yell at them or even to express that frustration right there was a rule governing their ability to authentically express how they're feeling and they have to wear this kind of plastic smile all the time whether that's what they're feeling or not so at a very basic level that's what display rules are Sometimes the display rules dictate that we exaggerate our emotions. So uh, when your boss tells a joke, whenever anyone in a position of authority over you tells a joke, you might find yourself laughing a little harder than like is actually actually merited, right? Um, and that's because that's one of the display rules that we we exaggerate positive emotions around authority of figures and so we can hear ourselves laughing too loudly at this joke that isn't that funny and we're like we don't like this about ourselves right we're like oh all right tone it down um and yet it's just kind of this natural reaction because of these display rules that say we should exaggerate that Sometimes display rules dictate that we minimize our emotions. Um, so if, if we ever get really upset or stressed out at work, we can't just start crying, right? Or that's frowned upon in American culture um, that we're supposed to, to uh, keep a stiff upper lip and kind of keep ourselves in check, keep calm uh, when we're at work. So um, some, of, some of the time display rules say, hey, we, we need to minimize your emotional expression. Sometimes display rules dictate that we substitute one emotion for a different emotion. So there's an, we have an emotional reaction that is inappropriate, and so we have to substitute it with an emotional reaction that is appropriate. Uh, this is, happens like sometimes, you know, a coworker, a classmate, uh, someone you know will get like a really awful haircut. I mean, just like really awful. And when you see them, you have this like, your first response is just shock. You have this look of shock on your face, right? Uh, and then you immediately go, oh my God, I love it, right? Because the real emotional experience is like, oh man, you look horrible and that's inappropriate. Display rules say that, you know, depending on how close you are with the person that you can't express that. So we substitute our shock for delight, uh, which of course sucks for the other person because they're walking around thinking everyone loves their horrible new haircut. Display rules are strongly influenced by culture. Uh, I lived in China for a year and they're in Chinese culture, they're less comfortable um, explaining, displaying emotions in public in general, especially negative emotions like anger. And uh, one time, one of the other teachers that I worked with got really upset at our boss who was Chinese and the other teacher was American, the boss was Chinese. And the teacher just flips out and is just like screaming and yelling uh, at my Chinese boss in front of like, uh, you know, other people like clients and customers and everything. And uh, my boss, you could tell was just so uncomfortable and her emotional reaction from an American perspective was just so uh, confounding. Um, and she just like pretended nothing was wrong, right? She's like, okay, okay, we'll get it figured out. Don't worry. And like just this, utter uh, reluctance to express the anger and the frustration that she almost certainly must have been feeling, right? Um, and of course, in America, uh, a boss would never put up with that. A boss would respond with the same level of anger and criticism almost always. Uh, and so that that's one example. If you've ever been traveling, if you've ever lived in a different culture, you know that one of the most difficult parts of, of being in a different culture is understanding these display rules. 
Display roles are also strongly influenced by gender. So uh, kind of the most obvious example of this is uh, Boys Don't Cry, right? That I remember being taught from a very young age uh, that it wasn't okay for me to cry. And that was like my parents teaching me that, like my mom and my dad teaching me that. That was uh, the teachers at school telling me that, giving me that information. That was my peers making fun of the other boys that did cry. And so society at large from a very young age taught me that it wasn't okay, it's not okay uh, for boys to cry. And I have uh, two sisters and they were not taught that same information, right? The, the, um, I mean, certainly they weren't like encouraged to go around crying, uh, but they had much more latitude in regard to that than I did. Um, alternatively, women are often dismissed for being overly emotional, uh, and actually the word hysterical comes from the root word, the Greek word for uterus, um, and it was this idea that like women are crazy and emotional. Um, and so they've done a lot of studies showing that doctors are often like very dismissive of when women come in um, complaining of like subjective symptoms like pain and that type of thing. Doctors are often very dismissive because they think they're just being overdramatic. Uh, and they will incorrectly uh, diagnose them with like a psychological disorder, like anxiety um, or depression or something like that, when they actually have a, a true medical, physical medical problem. Um, because it's it's just this idea that that well, when women go over the top, they're you know you know how emotional women can be. Uh, display rules are also influenced by ethnicity. So um, we talked earlier about how in the United States, um, black men are often perceived as more violent than white men, even if they're doing the same things and acting in the same way. And so um, within black culture, uh, men sometimes learn to turn down their, their anger and their expression of that um, because they know that's going to be misinterpreted in society at large. And, you know, you can see YouTube videos of um, black parents teaching their children how to interact with the police in a way where they can't be perceived as threatening, right? Because, um, and, and at a young age teaching children that, that they can express those emotions. It's not safe to express those emotions. Display rules are heavily influenced by hierarchy and power. Um, in general, the person with the most power in the room is the one who gets to set the emotional tone in the room. And they're also the person that has the most freedom to authentically express their emotion. Um, that we, we almost always follow the emotional lead of the person in charge. Um, they can emotionally express whatever they want and then we kind of just have to match their emotions most of the time. When we learn these display rules from a young age, it not only impairs our ability to express these emotions, but it can actually impair our ability to fully experience them. So one thing uh, I learned growing up was not just that it wasn't okay to cry in public, it was that it wasn't okay to feel sad. Um, it wasn't okay to, to have that feeling that made me want to cry. Um, and so it wasn't just about displaying it, it was about experiencing it. Now, of course, as a human being, I experience sadness and loss and disappointment and all these other things that make me cry. Um, and yet at a young age, I, I started kind of not to be aware of those things or to try to push those things out of my awareness because I felt that it was unacceptable for me uh, to experience those emotions. So display rules not only influence how we express our emotions, they, experience, they uh, influence how we experience them. The crazy thing about display rules is that they're not actually rules. Uh, there's no law anywhere that, that talks about how, which emotions we can express and when. Um, they're just norms. They're just social norms. They're just social expectations. Now, that's not to say they're not real. Social norms are real and have a strong influence on our behavior, um, and there are real consequences for violating social norms. But those norms are not as restrictive as they appear to be. And we actually have a lot more leeway with our emotional expression than we're sometimes aware of. And uh, I would encourage you guys to push emotional expression, to push authenticity, to challenge display rules. I mean, not for the sake of doing it, but um, in situations where you think it would be beneficial to do that, 
push it and see what the reaction gets. Um, and sometimes you can do things like that to inspire people, to connect to people, to get authenticity with people um, by, by breaking through, through those unspoken display rules.